California's fire season used to be May to October, but not anymore. I think it's no surprise that we basically have a year-round fire season in California. Last year's scorching heat dried out the lush vegetation that had grown during the two very wet years before. The average number of days per year where the vegetation is very available for fire has doubled since the 80s. In other words, extreme temperature swings from year to year created the fuel for the fire and the wind. One of the um, really dangerous effects of the Santa Ana winds is this drying effect and it dries the vegetation out. Ten years ago, world leaders promised to limit the average world temperature increase to just 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. But now, for the first time ever, the world has warmed more than that, according to the European Copernicus Climate Service. The fact that a single year exceed the 1.5 threshold doesn't mean that we miss the Paris Agreement target. But at the same time, is a, a psychologically important uh, element. And clearly, with the temperature rising uh, globally, the Paris Agreement will be reached in the near future. Higher temperatures don't just mean hotter weather. Heat is energy, and more energy in the atmosphere means more extreme weather. More hurricanes, more floods, more often, and with more power. The majority of scientists say that as well as switching to cleaner fuels, in the short term, we also need to adapt to extreme weather. In California's case, this could mean better access to water resources and more firefighters throughout the year, not just the summer. But that costs money. And with the incoming US president calling climate change a hoax, the political will and the money may be in shorter supply than the water in California. Paul Hawkins, TRT World.